Good afternoon and welcome to McLeod Athletic Park here in beautiful Langley, British Columbia. A sunny Canada Day as we bring you Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 against Seattle Sounders FC2. Brendan Batchelor alongside Michael McCall with you. Thanks for joining me for what should be a, a great match here this afternoon. Fantastic day for it. Very, very strong wind here, which it always seems to be up here at Langley. Going to be interesting to see how much this plays into the game and like who's going to have the wind in their favour in this first half. Let's start by taking a look at the players to watch for the match this afternoon. And we'll start with the visitors and Irvin Para from Seattle Sounders 2, tied for the team lead in goals. He's having a fantastic season, was called up to play in the, the US Open Cup tie on Wednesday, played at 89 minutes against San Jose. No goals or assists, but it was a great experience for him and he's, he's been fantastic this year. A 2-1 loss for Seattle Sounders in San Jose. Meanwhile, for Vancouver Whitecaps FC2, David Norman Jr. was really the straw that stirred the drink last week in a draw with OKC. Yeah, his first two career assists as a, as a professional. He's really started to find his feet in the last couple of games. He, the last three games in particular, he's starting to come on and showing exactly why the Caps are wanting to have a look at him with a potential MLS deal maybe in the offing. As we'll take a look at the starting 11s here for Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. And they will start Meyer Bevan up front, his first start as a member of Whitecaps FC2. Thomas Gardner in the middle of midfield, David Norman in behind him. Uh, they're playing a 4 2 3 1 style setup. Four Canadians in the starting lineup for this one. Meyer Bevan looking forward to, to seeing what he's going to bring to the team. Had a fantastic experience over at the FIFA Under-20 World Cup. A goal that was seen around the world uh, against Honduras. Getting his first start today and the Caps are really looking for a lot from him. Meanwhile, for Seattle Sounders to Irvin Para, we mentioned him. He's going to be up front in a 4-3-3 setup. And we'll give it to you from right to left at the back. It's Brian Meredith in goal. Brian Nanasinkum, Rodriga L, Sam Rogers, and Riley Grant make up the back four. In front of them, Lorenzo Ramos, Ray Sari, and Zach Mathers. And up front, Charles Rinkin, Irvin Para, and Shandon Hopiao. Zach Mathers is really doing well since he's dropped down from the MLS team. Five goals, joint leading with Irvin Para. Two assists as well. He leads with shots on goals. And he's going to be a, a danger to watch. Mathers and Para for sure for the Sounders. And watch out for 18-year-old Sam Rogers at the back. The Sounders think very highly of this young kid. Sounders, too, in the green shirts, blue shorts, green socks. We'll get us underway here. Whitecaps FC2 in the all-white kits. Brian Meredith down to our broadcast left in all red. Spencer Ritchie, the keeper for Whitecaps FC2 in all black on this warm day this warm Canada day in the lower mainland and here's Andy Toma getting forward down the left side darting in field and loses possession at the top of the box. Tenth meeting in, in midfield dispossessed there and a quick free kick. Tenth meeting between the teams in all time. Very even three wins, three defeats, three draws between the teams. Whitecaps won the only game so far this season 3-0 at Thunderbird back in April. And it is an important match in terms of the Western Conference standings in USL. Whitecaps, two at the moment, out of a playoff spot. They are in 12th, five points behind Seattle, who are in 7th and in the postseason picture at the moment. Whitecaps have a game in hand on Seattle, so a big one coming up here. If they can win this, they close within two. Caps sit in 12th in the West just now, but only three points back off the playoff places. A long ball forward towards Declan Wynn. We had that into the area, but out to collect is Brian Meredith, the 27-year-old New Jersey native, playing his fourth game of the season. 12 career MLS games with Seattle Sounders to his name as well. One clean sheet on the year for Meredith as well with Sounders too, so he'll be looking to see if he can add to that today. Both, goal, both teams have found goals this season. There's been very few times that the teams have been blanked, so... I would expect some goals this afternoon for sure. As mentioned, Whitecaps FC 2, a two-all draw with OKC Energy FC last weekend out at UBC's Thunderbird Stadium. And that was a match that saw some drama with Dominic Zator being sent off late in the second half. He is not available for selection this afternoon as a result of that red card. 
But the good thing about that, it's given a chance for Francis de Vries to come back into the starting lineup. Very highly thought of by Carl Robinson. He's really wanting to kind of see what de Vries and de Vick can do. And with the, the centre-back problems that they've had in the first team this year, there's a good chance for one of these two guys to possibly earn themselves a contract. Sounders moving forward into the attack. It's out wide with Brian Nana Sinkum, the right back. He'll roll it back for Charles Rankin. And it eventually ends up out into touch for a throw in for the Sounders on the near side. Nana Sinkum back into his own half. Rodriga L with the ball plays it forward. This could be a good move for Sounders. Charles Rankin darting towards the edge of the area. Can he get across? And he cuts it back onto his left foot. It's played back out into midfield. No goal threat there. Now Ray Sari. Again out wide onto the right side with Nana Sinkum, who does like to get forward. He'll find Rankin. A little give and go there with Zach Mathers doesn't result in anything, but Sounders, too, are asking questions here in the fourth minute. Interesting, they're, they're going a lot up the right wing, possibly trying to test Declan Wynn. Not long back in Vancouver after being away for a couple of weeks with the New Zealand national team over at the Confederations Cup. Wynn playing in the left-back position. David Norman, Jr., a little more infield in front of the back four, and Andy Toma playing in a striking role and it's interesting as that is dealt with in the box by Matthew Baldissimo interesting how we have seen Rich Fagan move players up and down as long as they're on the same side of the park Andy Thomas played a lot at left back he's striking today yeah he he's not afraid to think about the lineup he knows a lot of these guys especially the young Canadians he's been with a lot of these guys since they've been 11 years old so he knows their strengths he knows where they can play David Norman in particular can play a holding midfield he can play attacking midfield and also really strong in the middle of the park as well Norman Jr. as mentioned was strong in that match last week the 19 year old Coquitlam product had his first professional assist in that match last week as well. Yeah, he, he took a couple of games, I think, to find his feet since he, he came back from Oregon State. But he wants to be a professional. He r his heart is with the Whitecaps. He has a chance to go elsewhere, but he really wants to try and break into this team that he's grown up knowing and loving since he was a young kid. And Declan Wynn maybe getting into a little bit of trouble here. Does well to see off the pressure. Big collision Charles there. Charles Rankin. Sounders still in possession, though. And it really has been all up the right-hand side. Rankin in particular has got a lot of the ball. He's looking quite fast. He's getting given a lot of room out there, which is a, something to watch because he's a dangerous player and you can't give him too much room, which Wynn has been doing. Baldissimo played it ahead for Nazim Bartman, who was fouled just at the halfway line in a free kick for Whitecaps FC2. Should mention the officials for today. The referee is Juan Marquez. The assistant referees Jasmine Parr and Irina Cho. Alain Ruch is the fourth official. Sim DeVitt, the captain for Whitecaps FC2, was standing behind that. David Norman will play it back to Francis DeVries. DeVitt with the ball forward. Bartman couldn't rise to control that and the Sounders will play out from the back and Bartman scored his first professional goal last week in the draw and he, he's a guy that he's always been a prolific goal scorer at college he was touted very very highly expected to go in the first round of the draft or high in the second Caps eventually picked him up in the fourth round his South African status obviously having a lot to do with that Rankin again Received the ball from Nana Sinkum, trying to get a cross in, and pounds it off Declan Wynn and out for a throw in rather than a corner kick. And as we come to you this afternoon from McLeod Athletic Park in Langley, British Columbia, Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 against Seattle Sounders 2, a Cascadia Derby match. 
in USL. And whenever these teams meet, no matter what level that they're at, there, there's always a, some pride on the line wanting to be one of the best teams in Cascadia. Nana Sinkum hammers that off of Andy Toma and out of play again. As you talked about, second of three meetings between the two sides. Now Rankin got around Wynn and Wynn grabs a fistful of the shirt and this will be a free kick in an interesting spot for Seattle Sounders too. As you see there about 20 yards out, 24 yards to be more precise and a chance for it to be curled into the box here by Zach Mathers. Mathers goes for goal and sends it over. Spencer Ritchie had to dart across to the near post, but was able to let it go over the bar without touching it. Yeah, Rankin already is looking to be a, a handful out there on the right-hand side. The 23-year-old Zambian was actually born Charles Bimbe. The Sounders get forward and Francis DeVries there to see off the danger. As I was saying, Charles Rankin, originally Charles Bimbe, but moved to the United States in 2003 and was adopted by the Rankin family in Illinois. Actually spent some time at the Whitecaps Academy. Now playing for Sounders 2. Irvin Para, the man we mentioned off the top, in possession on that far side. Now it's rolled back into the defensive half. Ray Sari in midfield, long ball. Nana Sinkham again, the right back getting forward. Plays it infield, here's Mathers. Edge of the area, keeps possession again for Nana Sinkham. Watched closely by Declan Wynn. Tries to curl it in, Wynn does well to block that away. Nana Sinkham sticking with it and will earn a corner kick. The first of the match here in the 10th minute, still scoreless. Vancouver Whitecaps FC two and Seattle Sounders two. And Nana Sinkham's a player that Seattle's having a, a lot of look at this season. He's the only ever present so far in the, the Sounders lineup. 16th appearance on the year. He also has three goals and two assists from that right back slot. It is going to be Mathers on the corner kick. 23 year old Texan with a good ball into the box and there was a chance for a free header there for Sam Rogers. He couldn't connect with it though and the Whitecaps maybe have a chance to hit on the break. Meyer Bevan back into midfield. Nice ball over the top by Baldissimo. A little bit heavy though and Nazim Bartman wasn't going to have a chance to get to that. It's going to be interesting to see how Baldissimo fits back into playing at this level. Dropped down to play with the under 18s last week in Indiana in the USSDA playoffs. Played in all three games in the, the same team alongside his brother Michael. Unfortunately, a, a bad result in the end put the under-18s out, but Whitecaps under-16s going through, playing their quarter-final against Seattle this coming Thursday. Seven starts and ten appearances for Baldissimo, the 19-year-old from Burnaby, British Columbia, in USL this year. And playing in a holding midfield role this afternoon. You see him there in the middle of the park alongside David Norman. Here's Declan Wynn, rolls it forward, and a good job by Thomas Gardner to win the ball in midfield, and he's fouled as a result. Gardner had a really good game last week, got into a lot of attacking positions, had the chance to get a couple of goals, just it wasn't happening for him. We've seen how good he is coming through the residency program, he's always been a really high t highly touted player, and again he's starting to be one of these players that's finding his feet now at this level. DeVries again. Long ball forward, headed on by Toma, and here's a chance for Meyer Bevan to get forward, but off his line was Brian Meredith. Reacting quickly, and it was a vital reaction with Bevan, who, as you said, does have a nose for the net, as it were, bearing in on goal. Yeah, Bevan, he's, he's come here. I had a chat with him a couple of weeks ago, just after he arrived back after being away with New Zealand, and He's really hungry. He, he came here with the sole purpose of earning an MLS contract. And he knows he has to show at this level what he's got. 
He's a product of the Nike Academy, and so is David Akam at Chicago Fire. And if the Whitecaps can get a player like Akam and Bevan, that would be fantastic for them. No real high quality chances to speak of as we near closer to the quarter hour mark in the match. Sounders, I would say, have had the majority of the possession and Zach Mathers did go for goal off a free kick, but otherwise the Whitecaps have defended well, albeit early still. Yeah, Nana Sinkham's getting a lot of room out here on the right as well. The Declan Wynn seems to be getting sucked a lot into the center here. Here's Mathers. Looking to cut infield, David Norman Jr. back with a nice challenge, and now Meyer Bevin in possession again. Bevin infield for Norman. Dances out of trouble. And the Whitecaps will settle things down. Long ball by DeVitt looking for Bevin, who made a nice run forward. He's had a couple of good runs so far this afternoon, just not getting the delivery that he's been looking for, but he's hungry, he's eager, and he's getting into some, some good positions. If the Whitecaps can find him, then he definitely looks like the guy that can make something happen for this team today. It was Rodriga L, the 19-year-old Cameroonian center back with the critical header there to prevent Bevan from sneaking in on goal alone. Here's L again up the right side. Now to sink him to his right. We'll pass it nicely infield for Para into the area, looking to cut onto his left foot. Baldissimo there to clear the danger. It ends up back with him though. Baldissimo. Ahead for Andy Toma. Now it's back for DeVries, rolls it back to Richie, who had to react quickly. DeVries under some pressure there. Dangerous ball back to Richie, but Richie doing well to, to clear the danger and set a Caps move up here. Norman with a long ball. Toma will take that down on the near side. Loses possession, and now Rankin called for a foul as Toma goes to ground. Baldissimo with the ball again. Declan Wynn for Andy Toma, again for Wynn, and now Baldissimo. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. 16th minute at McLeod Athletic Park in beautiful Langley, British Columbia. Nil-nil to this point in the match. Healthy looking crowd in here today as well. Always good to see. They've been drawing some good crowds out here in Langley this season. And uh, the local population is definitely getting behind this team. And it's always nice to see that. Lovely day for a match as well. And to get out and celebrate Canada's 150th birthday. Of course, it is Canada Day, July the 1st today. You see a lot of red and white in the stands on the near side, although you can't see them on the wide shot there at the moment. I'm just trying to work out how the wind is blowing. It seems to be quite a swirling wind because the corner flags are all flying in different directions here. So that might have an input into how this game's going to get played as the game goes on a little bit. It does help, particularly on a hot day like this, that the wind does whip through. It'll prevent it from really overheating the players like we saw a week ago out at UBC. Yeah, that, that was, as a, a pale Scott, that wasn't a, a <laughs> great afternoon last week, I have to say. Now here's Gardner, forward on the right side. Caden Chun sneaking forward as well. But that pass didn't connect. Nicely cut out by Baldissimo, and he goes in. Is he going to be booked here as he won the ball, but caught the Seattle player as well. I mean, the Baldissimo, all three of the brothers have been known as they come through the residency program for their hard tackling. It, it's something I've enjoyed watching for a number of years now. And it's in the modern game, it's kind of tough because you're not getting away with that. Picking up the booking there, Baldissimo, and 
he's got a long way to go now to try and keep his head and make sure he doesn't fly into another one. And as we had another look at the challenge there. And good to see that nothing more is going to come of that. I believe that's Riley Grant that went down under the challenge. Or I think Baldissimo did yellow pick the booking up there. He did, yes. He was shown the yellow. So goes into the book, the first player this afternoon to do so. I'll correct myself. That was Shandon Hopiao, who is now back to his feet and forward in the attack. Sim DeVitt watched closely by Zach Mathers. Bit of a miss kick there from DeVitt giving Seattle a, a chance for a throw in here. In the attacking third, no less. As they look to try and set up a play that will give us the opening goal. Mathers for Riley Grant. Infield for Ray Sari and all sorts of space. Back for Rodriga L. To the right back, Nana Sinkum. In the infield for Charles Rinkin, but Sounders can't keep possession. And here they go forward. Bevan offside. Would have been in clean, but the flag came up immediately from the assistant referee on the far touchline. And that was a close one, I'll say. I thought Bevan might have checked his run just enough, but it'll be brought back. Haven't seen a, a lot of Bevan play, but he does appear to be a player that he's one of those guys that plays right on the edge. So he's going to get caught offside more times than on, but it's the ones where he does stay onside that he's going to be a big, big danger. And as we looked at that replay, I think he probably was offside. Yeah. He is quick, though, so his acceleration can sometimes play tricks on the eyes. And I think Bevan's going to be a guy that we see as a regular starter for WFC2 now coming down the stretch, possibly dropping out the team when Kyle Gregg comes in. But there is scope to manage to have both these guys in the starting lineup. And exciting to see what a Bevan-Gregg partnership could do up front. And you can't forget Thomas Sanner, the big man as well. Yeah, leading scorer for WFC2 just now. Now here's Bevan with his right foot just wide of the far post as he found some space there at the top of the area. 22-year-old New Zealander looking to open his account with the club. Yeah, he's definitely got an eye for goal today. When you come to a new club, especially when you're very highly touted, getting that first goal, getting the monkey off your back, that, that's what you want to do. So he's keen to get that now. You mentioned Sano there as well. I said he was the, the top scorer, top USL guy that's the scorer, Bustos. Marco Bustos is leading the team with four goals and four appearances. Fantastic strike record for the residency alumni. Nana Sinkum trying to hold it in play. Couldn't do so. Throw in for Whitecaps FC2. It'll be Declan Wynn. And Bevan's chance there. By far the best opportunity Whitecaps FC2 have had on the afternoon. It's a little bit of a pedestrian pace at the moment. There's some bursts of speed from both teams, but they're happy just to knock the ball around. Sorry. Maybe thought about going for a goal. Rolls it back, and Nazim Bartman is there to give the Whitecaps the possession again as they look to get men forward. David Norman through the center circle. Long ball. Can Andy Toma keep this in play? He can and he could play a cross in too, dealt with by Rodriga L. And played calmly into midfield for Zach Mathers. Mathers has Para ahead of him. Gives him the ball, then back to Mathers. Gets around to Vitt. He's got a chance to go with his left foot. Stopped by Richie. He got his fingertips to it. Fantastic. An important stop from the Vancouver keeper. Keeps it goalless in the 22nd minute. Fantastic save from Spencer Ritchie there. He's really good at point blank stops. DeWitt cannot allow, though, Seattle to get behind him like that. It was uh, another sloppy play from DeWitt. We've seen a couple of that t today as well from DeVries. So uh, the centre backs definitely needing to shore up a little bit to try and keep the Sounders at bay. Tremendous save from Ritchie. We'll have another look at it in a moment. David Norman. 
Out wide for Toma, curls that into the box. Running forward was Gardner, but it was dealt with by the 18-year-old center back, Sam Rogers. Whitecaps in possession again, though. Caden Chung for Gardner. Back for Chung, darting into the area. Goes down under a challenge and is waved to his feet by our match referee, Juan Marquez. No penalty there, although the Whitecaps were shouting for it. Now here's a ball curled in. Meyer Bevan trying to go for the bicycle kick there. Unable to get all of it. And the young Caps here amping up the pressure as we near the half hour mark. Yeah, Vancouver definitely turning the heat up a little bit here. Not sure that was a penalty. There was a maybe a little bit of contact, but I do think Chung went down very, very easily there. Andy Toma has really impressed me today out here in the left wing. He's whipped some beautiful balls into the box. Brought in to the team for a little bit of experience. He's still only 24, but this is his third USL season. Played with Timbers 2 for the last two years. Seemed a little bit of a surprising addition at first when he was brought in. We're just seeing the replay now of Seattle's chance and fantastic save by Spencer Ritchie. Mentioning Toma, he scored his only goal of the season in the 3-0 win over Seattle back on April the 8th. That was a game that also saw Declan Wynn open his account for Whitecaps 2 with a stunning goal, possibly one of the goals of the season for, <laughs> for this WFC 2 side. And they'll be looking for more here this afternoon, but as of yet, nil-nil. Declan Wynn. Forward to Gardner, Wynn gets it back. A little bit of interplay there between Gardner and Wynn, and now Sam DeVitt will bring it forward. DeVitt, right-footed ball towards Gardner, and out to claim it is Brian Meredith. Keeper wearing the captain's armband for Sounders 2 this afternoon. As they look to use the pace of Rankin down the right side, but Declan Wynn is able to see off that pressure. Fans in the grandstand certainly getting a close-up view of all the action. All Whitecaps good breaks are coming up the left wing. All Sounders are coming up the right. Now, uh, errant pass from Bevan, and here's Rankin infield for Mathers. And a bit of a healthy challenge there from Sem DeVitt, who has something to say to the referee, but this is going to be a free kick and in a good spot too, about 30 or 29 yards away from goal right towards the middle of the park. And we saw Mathers go for goal off a set piece once already this afternoon. Could it be a chance for him to do again? Definitely a hard tackle by DeWitt, who <laughs> I loved how he pointed up at the scoreboard there. It's far as not in play yet, but it, it was a hard <laughs> tackle. It looked a little bit clumsy, and I think whenever you come over the ball like that, most of the times referees are going to give a foul against you. So it will be Para and Mathers standing behind this. Rogers back there as well. And only four players forward for Sounders, too. You have to think that could mean that they'll go for goal here. It will be Para with his right foot just a couple of feet over the bar. And nothing that troubles Spencer Ritchie on that occasion. Dipping free kick, a few more yards back, he would possibly have, have got that on target. But yeah, Ritchie untroubled there. Another look at it here. Just didn't dip down for it. And it remains goalless at McLeod Athletic Park. DeVries, diagonal ball towards Bartman. Headed away by the left back, Riley Grant. Whitecaps win the ball in the middle of the park. DeVries. Now to David Norman Jr. on that left side. Ball played through. Nice little touch by Toma to play it on. Here's Wynn into the box. Cross didn't find anyone. Bevan was in the vicinity, but it was never going to reach him, and now it'll be a goal kick. Yeah, a weak cross in from Wynn, but a lovely little flick on from Toma, who's all over this left side of the pitch at, at the moment. And you, you kind of feel that if anything's going to happen for the Whitecaps, it's going to come through Toma to Bevan. 
They have been two of the more lively members of the home side to this point. Well, you could say the same for Nana Sinkum, the right back, and Charles Rankin playing forward on the near side as well. Ball cut out there by Declan Wynn, and he's going to run with it up the near side. Tried to curl it infield. I think that was maybe intended for Bevan. And Rankin's away the other way. Good tackle by David Norman, but he's going to be called for a foul. I think it was possibly for the original nudge by Toma there. As he was running back to try and close down Rankin. Yeah. Quickly taken free kick. And again, it's Nana Sinkum. Rodriga L. Now on the near side, Toma. Heavy collision with Nana Sinkum. No foul, just a throw in. And then Nana Sinkum, 22 years old from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, a product of Stanford University. We'll roll it back to L again. Sam Rogers, a Seattle native playing for Sounders team in possession. He's another one that got the call up against San Jose in the US Open Cup game and seems to have given a good account of himself as well from reports. Gardner forward up the right side to Bevan. Nice ball through just behind Bartman. Right idea though. Now Declan Wynn looking to follow up. Wanted to have a hit maybe but couldn't find the space to do so. Now David Norman goes and actually hit Bevan in the box. And is headed back to the keeper, Meredith, by Ray Sari. That'll be a sore one for Bevan. I've seen Davy Norman's Thunderbolt strikes for a few <laughs> years now, so you don't want to get on the end of that. And the question, for me anyway, is whether that would have tested Meredith had Bevan not got in the way. I think it very probably would. It did look like it was on target. And although at the start of the match, Norman was listed in more of a holding midfield role. We have seen him get further up the park as we've carried on here towards the half hour mark. Sounders with the ball again. Sorry for Rinkin, top of the box right side. For Nanasinkum again for Rinkin. Wide area, crossed into the box, took a deflection, and it's hit by Sorry and blocked away by DeVitt. Grant, back for Rogers, and then again into midfield for Lorenzo Ramos. Challenge there from Norman. Play will continue though with Rankin and Nana Sinkum, and their interplay that we've seen back and forth on this right touchline all match. Now there's space up the left side. Here's Hopiow. Curls it into the area. It falls to Mathers, top of the box. Toma back. Gave away possession. Mathers has it again. Crosses in. Headed away by DeVitt. And a volley, and it rolls off a player and in. Oh, my word. Ray Sari. Will he get credit for that one? Will it be an own goal? I'm not sure. But sorry, strike, I think, caught DeVitt in the box. Richie helpless as it trickled across the goal line, and the visitors lead by a goal to nil in the 31st minute. Not a lot Spencer Richie could do there. All came from that bad giveaway from Andy Toma. And we'll just see the ball here, see who it came off. I think it might have been DeVitt. Hard yeah. to tell from that look. This should be a better angle as it was struck. On the volley from Sari, didn't get all of it, but whether it came off DeVries or DeVitt, it completely froze Spencer Richie. Richie going down to his right, looked to have the shot covered by that deflection. Nothing he could do about that at all. It's probably needed a goal for the, this game to come, to come to life a little bit. So Whitecaps, too, have only been kept off the score sheet twice all season. One in the home opener, or one in the, the season opener, and then a 0-0 draw at home to Sacramento. So there is goals in this team. And as we get that look again, it was DeVitt that it came off of. As of now, they're crediting it to Sari, and I think it was probably on target. It was the deflection off DeVitt that 
that obviously prevented Richie from getting to it, but it should be Sari's goal, and it is his second of the season. It's tough for a defender. There's not really a lot you can do when the ball's coming at you that fast, and DeWitt just couldn't get out the way, but the Vancouver will be disappointed that the goal came from more sloppy giveaways in the box, which they've had a few times so far today. And Toma, who we've lauded for his play up the park, obviously involved in the giveaway and the eventual goal at the other end. Yeah, and uh, the Cavs just need to regroup now. It's a long, long way still to go in this game. So it is Ray Sari's goal in the 31st minute that opens the scoring this afternoon at McLeod Athletic Park. Seattle Sounders, two. Lead by a goal to nil. Brendan Batchelor and Michael McCall with you here. Thanks for joining us. As Nana Sinkham again infield, he's got space. Decides not to hit it, plays it out wide onto the right for Rankin. Back into midfield for Lorenzo Ramos. He'll spray it out across to Riley Grant, the left back. Grant forced to put it out under pressure from Nazim Bartman, and the Whitecaps will try and build from the back as they look for an equalizer. And preferably, they'd like to find it before the halftime break. One of the things Seattle's done well in this game so far is that they're getting to the edge of the box fairly easy. But a plus point for Vancouver's point of view is they've managed to not allow them to get many clean shots off, which it was maybe going to take something like a deflection for them to, to get through this back line. But they're allowing Seattle to get to the edge of their box on far too many occasions. Ball forward towards Toma. And he does a good job of forcing Nana Sinkum to play it out. Probably going to see a long throw here from Declan Wynn. Plays it to Gardner, back for Wynn, trying to cut in field. Mathers there to intercept, and sorry, the goal scorer in possession in the middle of the park. Yeah, shorter throw in from Wynn there. He has got a really good long throw in him, and now he's a little bit out of position, but not punished, thankfully. Rinkin. Unable to hold it in play. He had acres of space to run into had he been able to corral the ball. Instead, the Whitecaps once again with it at the back. DeVitt for Caden Chung, the young Port Coquitlam product. And as we bring it up here on this Canada Today, good to see so many Canadians in the side for Whitecaps FC2. Uh, we've got a number on the bench as well. Quite a lot of uh, attacking options on the bench for, for the Whitecaps. Gloria Mand is back from being down with her residency at, at the playoffs, and we've got Thomas Sanner as well. So there's goals in those two. David Norman holds the ball in play and wins a corner kick. The first of the match for Whitecaps FC2, and they created goals from corners a week ago. Can they do so again? And even the score here in the 36th minute. And the, the Whitecaps definitely have the wind at their backs in, in this half now, the way that the flag's blowing here. So they need to try and take advantage of this in the last 10 minutes. And Norman delivered a couple of fantastic corners last week. It will be Norman with his left foot. They've got DeVries and DeVitt forward, and it has to be held out off the line by Meredith. I think Norman might have curled that into the goal himself had it remained untouched. Yeah, that looked really good. That was right on the keeper there, and he did well to get that away. Just watch the replay coming in here. And it could be that wind helping out. I'm not sure if it was Meredith or the defender that was able to get a touch on it, but good on Norman. A great chance from the corner and sliding in there is David Norman Jr. And he's going to go into the book along with Matthew Baldissimo. And that is another aspect of David Norman's game that, that we've seen a lot through the years. He's another guy that's a really tough tackler. He's kind of calmed his play down a little bit in the past. He has been, in the recency in particular, quite a few tackles and a couple of sending offs in his career. But he, he's definitely a guy that can make things happen. He's got a very cultured foot. And he's a player that was involved with the Whitecaps' first team in their Canadian Championship squad, made the trip through to Montreal, also was on the, for the first leg at BC Place as well. And I believe the plan was to try and get him some minutes in that game, but the, the way the game had panned out, Carol Robinson just couldn't bring on some young guys, needed to get a bit more experience in there. So that was an opportunity for him, but 
Carl Robinson and the first team are definitely keeping an eye on what Norman can do this season. Former Canadian under 15 and under 17 national team player. Had a year at Oregon State and he, he excelled there. And then he had a chance to sign pro before he went down to Oregon and then decided to, to go to college. But then the Whitecaps came back, they had chats, decided to, to leave college early and come for a career in the pros. And he's definitely somebody that is keen to make it as a professional. And as we said earlier, loves the Whitecaps, growing up with the team and really just wants to be a player with this team. Two goals, five assists with Oregon State last season. He, he, he impressed, and there's there's a couple of Whitecaps residency guys at, at college right now who have had a couple of good seasons, and it's going to be interesting to see if the Caps look to bring them in at some point. So Norman into the book, Baldissimo already there in terms of yellow cards. Game's getting a little bit stop-start now, which is going to suit Seattle with a, a one-goal lead. Vancouver need to try and keep the, the pace going. It has dropped considerably since, since the start of the game. We did see them push forward after conceding the goal. Create a couple of half chances, but other than the Norman corner kick, they really haven't tested keeper Brian Meredith as Nazim Bartman leaves a foot in on Riley Grant and that's a yellow card for him as well it looks like yeah cards are starting to to fly now as are the tackles just have a look at this one again he wasn't he didn't exactly go right through him he did go for the ball the ball was knocked away he was just unfortunate to catch him there a little bit unfortunate I think to get a yellow for that it's his first tackle of the game didn't really seem that bad a tackle But it just stops the game, the flow again, and, and the Whitecaps are just wanting to try and get something back before half time here. And you also have to wonder whether it changes the approach for Rich Fagan in terms of second half substitutes now with three players in the book. We're going to get another look at this tackle here. Yeah, it was just his pace that took him through. I don't really see a, a lot in that. it was ruled to be a yellow card by Juan Marquez who uh, has been put to work here and he's still not back up so it could have been a, a bit more damage than, than it looked to be sometimes it's hard to tell on on those and Sam Rogers rather not Riley Grant who regains his feet That'd be a big blow for the Sounders uh, if he is forced to go off. He looks like he's made a recovery, though. A quick and miraculous one. Yeah. <laughs> this is his 14th appearance for, for Sounders 2 this afternoon. And he's a guy that's come through the academy system, just signed his, his pro deal in June. And he's had a, a lot of appearances as an academy call-up. And the Sounders now given him his official USL contract. Definitely one that they're keeping an eye on. Signed it just a couple of weeks ago on June 13th, to be precise, former captain of the under-18 team. And at 18 years of age, a Seattle product, playing as a starting center back this afternoon for Sounders 2. Nice for that club to see a homegrown product there, as well as Para goes for goal from distance. Richie came across, and I think would have been all right to make the save had it been on goal, but doesn't trouble him. Yeah, going back to Rogers there, I mean, the Sounders, they're like the Whitecaps. They give a lot of their academy products a, a look, and it's good to see that. A lot of these guys will know each other. They've played in the USSDA against each other a number of times. So they'll know Rogers well. They'll know what his weaknesses are, and he'll know how to play against some of these young guys like Tommy Gardner and Matthew Baldissimo. L to take the free kick. Goes across to Rogers. The two of them have formed a good partnership in the center of defense this afternoon as Gardner goes down under a heavy collision. 
didn't even look like the referee had given the foul there. He didn't stop running or, or point at the spot. But no card brought out for that one. As it looked like Gardner was just trying to protect the ball and the Seattle player ran into him. Now Meyer Bevan called for a foul. Yeah, it's getting choppy now. They're just... I think both teams will just be keen to get into halftime, get a chance to regroup, see what Rich Fagan can do to this team. He's not averse to making halftime substitutions. Obviously, the Whitecaps would like a goal before the break, but at the same time, with the stop-start nature and some of the challenges we've seen over the last couple of minutes, might be good just to get there where you sit right now and reevaluate things. Nana Sinkum, pressured by Toma, wins the throw. Hard for us to tell up here in terms of what the conditions are like at pitch level, but heat could play a factor here as we get near halftime and into the second half. Yeah, the, the wind is again swirling. It's changing directions quite a lot during this game. Rankin for Nana Sinkin. Short pass, controlled by Para, back for Sari. Scored the only goal of the match back in the 31st minute. That has Sounders two ahead. Nana Sinkin again for Rankin as they look to work it up that right side like they have throughout the first half. Para concedes possession to Declan Wynn. Wynn with a long ball forward. Toma unable to get there. L to it first. Now Nana Sinkum. After a couple of attempts, passes through to Lorenzo Ramos. Ball out wide. Can Rankin hold it in? He's rolled offside. Doesn't matter. Flag up from assistant referee Jasmine Parr, I believe, on the near side. Or is that Rena Cho, excuse me? Rankin's got a, a good bit of pace to him. He's just not had a, a lot of breaks so far today. But one of the good things that the Whitecaps have done is they've kept Zach Mathers fairly quiet today. He's not really had a sniff and goal. Irvin Parra's had a couple of attempts, but nothing really on target yet to test Spencer Ritchie. So those seem to be the two danger men for Seattle. Vancouver's kept them under control. Just unfortunate to be behind to a deflection. We have now reached the end of 45 minutes. We'll have two to be added on here, as indicated by the fourth official. And the Whitecaps looking to ask questions of the Sounders' back line up this left side. Wind dispossessed. Mathers in midfield. Hounded by David Norman Jr., but keeps the ball. Mathers played it back. Rogers plays it off. David Norman Jr. and out. I've enjoyed this battle in the first half between Wynn and Rankin. It's at both ends of the park. They, they've been tracking each other well, keeping each other at bay. Fans, make sure you tune in to USL's weekly show on Sirius XMFC Channel 85, Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific time for the latest news and information from around the league. Don't forget... Sirius XM FC also airs the USL Game of the Week. Check uslsoccer.com for dates and times. It is USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts. As Bartman looked to be fouled there in midfield. Referee waves play on and the Sounders are getting forward here. In numbers. Rankin darting down the right side. Win with him stride for stride. Rankin plays it in to Mathers. Quickly to Rankin. Back into midfield for Ramos. And I would expect the halftime whistle to come here at any moment. As the referee takes a look at his watch. But won't bring an end to the half just yet. Here's Bevan forward for Baldissimo. Wins the ball. So it has it roll away from him. Sorry, tracking back. Regains possession for Sounders, too, who play it forward for Para. And that'll be the end of the first half. The only goal 
scored by Ray Sari. A bit of a strange one back in the 31st minute. Has Seattle Sounders 2 leading Whitecaps FC 2 by a goal to nil at the break. We'll be back with the first half highlights in just a moment. And once you go upstairs, the second level is basically split in two halves. One is the first team half, and then the other is WFC2 and Academy. So it creates a separation and aspirational motivation to move towards the first team side. First class, man. First class. They thought of everything. And, and they put me next to a bunch of these Americans in here. So I might need to change that up. Yo hablo espanol. So. Oh, I'm next to the goalkeeper. That definitely needs to change. Come on. Oh, yeah. Everything is controlled by this locker right here. So every morning you have to come and tell me what the latest music we want. So far, it's really nice. Uh, the locker room is great. The locker room is really good. It definitely surprised me. I'm definitely surprised. I'm really happy. <laughs> it's a uh, European style with uh, a lot of technology, and uh, obviously for for us, uh, how the club is taking care of the players, uh, giving us the the tools to step every day in training. Uh, with everything we need, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, very nice. I've never seen anything like that. No? See, European style. Like open, you can see face to face. It's not always about wins, losses, draws, added time, missed tackles, clearances, possession, rivalries, goals, and assists. Sometimes it's about the people and the stories that shape them. Introducing the official Whitecaps FC podcast, Sideline Stories. In-depth interviews with your favorite Whitecaps players and personalities, hosted by me, Perry Solkowski. Show your ears some love. So nerve -wracking. We 
a privilege to have from Ghana a member of the Vancouver Whitecaps uh, and who will play on the Canadian national team, which is a wonderful thing as a newly minted Canadian citizen. So I want to pay special uh, uh, welcome to Alfonso Davies. Really exciting for everybody to see him joining the full men's national team now as a Canadian citizen. So I think uh, we're all very proud of Alfonso. Um, I'm sure his family's very proud. This is something my parents, uh, they went through, but they didn't, they didn't make it. So I'm glad that I could do it for them and do it for the family. Coming to Canada is, is what we were dreaming as a family to get here. Now we're here that I'm excited that I'm a Canadian citizen. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. At work or at play, you're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Oh, hey, she's cute. Nice going, man. Things are going great for you. You earned a night out. Good drinks, good friends. Yeah, we can go ahead and call this a good night. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh, not smart. Yeah, I saw that coming. Say goodbye to her. Ouch, that'll hurt your bank account. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. I hope you like eating frozen dinners alone. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Raise the stakes. Expectations are high. Our biggest season yet will break records with elite players and future stars. Innovative technology and new homes. We're growing the game in our communities and across the nation. Are you ready? Langley, British Columbia, where Seattle Sounders 2 lead Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2 by a goal to nil at the halftime break. And let's take a look at the first half highlights. And it was a busy first half for referee Juan Marquez, who had to go into his book in the 17th minute. Matthew Baldissimo receiving a yellow card for that challenge. Whitecaps did have some looks. Meyer Bevan edged the area, just missed wide of the target on the right side he has been lively when he's had the ball at his feet getting forward hasn't had too many opportunities that was his best 
Big save for Spencer Rich at the other end of the park on Zach Mathers, who got in behind the Whitecaps defense. And that came in the 22nd minute. Whitecaps having trouble clearing from their box and a tough deflection off Sim DeVitt off Ray Sari's volley finds its way past Spencer Ritchie, giving the Sounders the lead. David Norman with a good corner kick there almost found its way into the goal. Another challenge. Norman just a couple of minutes later into the book. After sliding in there, Nazim Bartman leaves a foot in on uh, one of the Seattle defenders, Sam Rogers, there as well. He was also issued a yellow card, so Baldissimo, Norman, and Bartman have all been booked here in the first half, and Whitecaps FC2 trail by a goal to nil. Sorry off the deflection from DeVitt, the lone marker of the game, as we take a look at the first half statistics, and some positives there, Michael, from that opening half for Whitecaps FC2. At the same time, uh, they'll look to try and find an equalizer early here in the second half. Yeah, they, they've shown in glimpses that they've got players that can trouble this Sounders defense, but their final delivery into the box has just not been there. They need to try and get Bevan in behind the defense a little bit. He looks like the guy that's going to make a lot of things happen for him. Davey Norman impressed me in the first half. Going to have to watch now, though, being on that yellow card. He is a tough tackling midfielder, so he's going to have to watch as well, Matthew Baldissimo. But they, they need to kind of mix it up a little bit, but the crucial thing for me is just improving that delivery. The big statistic for me there on the screen, no shots on target for Whitecaps FC2. Obviously, that's going to have to change. In the second half, we'll be back with the kickoff for the second 45 minutes from McLeod Athletic Park in just a moment. It's not always about wins, losses, draws, added time, missed tackles, clearances, possession, rivalries, goals, and assists. Sometimes it's about the people and the stories that shape them. Introducing the official Whitecaps FC podcast, Sideline Stories. In-depth interviews with your favorite Whitecaps players and personalities, hosted by me, Perry Solkowski. Show your ears some love. Park in Langley, British Columbia, as we get set for the second half. Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 trail. Seattle Sounders 2 by a goal to nil. Ray Sorry with the lone marker of the first half. And it looks like we have a change here in the back four for Whitecaps FC2, Michael. And it looks like it's going to be Francis DeVries coming off the park. Yeah, it looks like Will Seymour is coming on from for DeVries. Can kind of understand it. This is DeVries' first game back. He's been out of action for oh, six to eight weeks now with a with an injury. It was a torn meniscus, so they're wanting to ease him back gently. He's going to be an important part of this team going down the stretch, so no need to rush him. Will Seymour, very versatile player. We've seen him play in the holding role. We've seen him playing as a centre back. Him and DeWitt have a very good understanding, so. That, that should be a little bit better at the back there. It'll be interesting to see if he does indeed make a like-for-like -like swap into the back four or whether they maybe move someone like Baldissimo or Gardner back. I think it would have to be Seymour if they want to go with four at the back. They could always go into their three at the back formation, which they did a couple of times earlier in the season, to a lot of success as well. But... Whether you can just suddenly switch it uh, at half time and go to three at the back will be interesting to see. And the way that they've been playing out wide, Seattle, Rankin especially, I think you want to keep a flat back four there. So I think we'll see Seymour going 
beside DeVitt at the back here. Meyer Bevin, the lone striker thus far for Whitecaps FC2. And whether he'll have some joy here in the second half, we'll have to wait and see. We saw on the highlights he did have that half chance where he missed wide of the target, but Brian Meredith has not been tested as of yet for Sounders too, and as I said earlier, that obviously has to change. Yeah, that's going to be one of the biggest disappointments, I think, for the Whitecaps in that first half, not to get any shots on target. They've, they've got an exciting front line out there. I mean, Bartman got his first pro goal last week. We've seen at college level that he's been very prolific. At one time, he was touted as the, the next Dom Dwyer, although a big part of that was more to do with his journey to America from South Africa, coming through the lower leagues, same colleges as Dom Dwyer. And he's a guy that can make a lot of things happen. He's so keen, he's itch inching forward past the halfway line here. <laughs> As the home side get us underway in the second 45 minutes. And we saw the uh, official match stats didn't have a shot on target. But for my money anyways, David Norman's corner kick might as well count as one because he did force Meredith into a safe. Yeah, definitely it was heading in towards the goal. It was just a bit disappointing. There was no white caps there closer to the keeper or to capitalize on that spilled ball. David Norman up the right side looking to play through for Bartman. That's dealt with by Grant and hammered out into touch. Now we saw a lot of the play on the near touch line in the first half. Whether it'll switch to the far side or not remains to be seen. Early on anyways, the white caps looking like they're trying to attack up the right side through Bartman, Gardner, and Chung. Seymour indeed taking up that spot in the center of defense in place of Francis de Vries, has to dart back with Para trying to get to the ball. Seymour sees off that pressure calmly and rolls it back for Declan Wynn. I like what Seymour brings to this team. He's, he's an experienced head. And he, he can play so many different positions. And whenever he does come in, he's very, very like trustworthy. It's like very seldomly does he make many mistakes. And DeVitt and him do have a good understanding. Played some of the preseason games at the back together. His third season with Whitecaps FC2 for the 25-year-old from Colorado Springs, Will Seymour. Third round pick of FC Dallas back in the 2015 MLS Super Draft. Made 25 appearances for Whitecaps FC2 last year, including the two playoff victories. So as you said, in, in the terms of this young club, very experienced. Yeah, and that's one of the things which is lacking with this Whitecaps 2 side. It's a really young team this year. In the first two seasons in the league, they've had some experienced heads, Tyler Rosenlin, Kyle Gregg last year. But just now you're looking at Will Seymour, probably the oldest at 25, Sam DeVitt's 21, but captain. But he brings a lot of experience as well. And Andy Toma, as we mentioned in the first half. Thomas Gardner towards Meyer Bevin, edge of the area. Plays it back for Matthew Baldissimo. Thought about having a hit and play, instead plays it out wide. Now it's sent into the box and tipped on by Bevin. Tremendous save by Meredith. They've challenged the keeper now. Meyer Bevin getting some good service in the box and very nearly put the Whitecaps on level terms. Nearly poked that one away. That's the, the danger that he can be. He's a, a guy that's good at close range. And they need to get the ball to him more. But I, I would also, I think, in this half, go more up the right wing. Because we know that Bartman can be dangerous. He didn't have a lot of success going up the left in the first half. So I would try and switch it around and try and get Bartman more involved. Grant rolls it forward up that left side. Shandon Hopio. Tried to play it into the box. Sim DeVitt there to intercept Spencer Ritchie to roll it forward. And the Whitecaps look to counterattack quickly from the back. David Norman. Leaves for Nazim Bartman as he was being pressured by Hopiow trying to close him down. Will Seymour with the ball at his feet. Out on to the left side for Declan Wynn. Seymour with it again. Whitecaps content to keep possession for the moment. I've been watching Bevan at the start of this half. He's very active. He's right on the shoulder of Rogers and moving around the, the centre-back pairing a lot, trying to get some space, try and make something happen. David Norman looked to have won the ball there. It's called back for a foul, and he has to tread carefully, as do Baldissimo and Bartman, all three of them on yellow cards from the first half. 
If you're wanting to pick two white caps players that you don't want to pick up an early card, it would probably be Norman and Baldissimo just because they're known for their, their hard tackles. I, I love the way they play. It's the way I've been brought up to watch football <laughs> back in Scotland. And to me, it's something that's lacking in the modern day game. But unfortunately, they are going to have to watch what they do here. And it is a fine line to tread between trying to play your game and, as you mentioned, the game that you've been taught from a young age and at the same time, very important not to be sent off, particularly when you're down a goal. We did see Dominic Zator earn a red card a week ago at Thunderbird Stadium. At that point, Whitecaps were in a two-all draw after having clawed back from 1-0 and 2-1 deficits against OKC Energy, and they managed to hold on for the single point. Yeah, it looked like they were in the ascendancy, and I think Zator sending off probably cost them the three points. It's hard to say because, I mean, 12 minutes of the game left to go, you don't know how it was going to go, but they were definitely in the ascendancy at that point. Sounders content to knock the ball around. Sorry. The goal scorer darting into midfield. Lorenzo Ramos to the right back Nana Sinkum back for L as they work it forward up the right side of the park Charles Rankin knocks it off Declan Wynn and out for a corner kick and this pace of play is going to suit Seattle they, they don't need to chase the game they're a goal up they just have to take it easy can uh, control the middle of the park a little bit they're doing it well they're knocking the ball around well getting their corner here Still 40 minutes or so to play, though, so lots of time for the Whitecaps to try and claw back as L pokes that wide of the far post. Yeah, it's important they, they don't give us a second goal here. Two goals up against this team, which is strong defensively. It would be a tough ask for them, but there's, there's goals all over this Whitecap side. They just can't afford like sloppy giveaways like that we just see there from David Norman. We talked about the Whitecaps 3-0 win over Seattle back here in April. Very different game here this afternoon. And sometimes in USL, if you have players going up and down from the first team and changes being made, you can see two very different sides in two different games against the same team. The thing with this Whitecaps 2 team for the last couple of seasons so is they've always played better when they've not actually had the MLS guys in the team and it's the core guys that train all week. They seem to have a better understanding and that's what we've got out there today. So you would expect a little bit more cohesiveness and just understanding between the guys. Talked about it last week on the broadcast with David Edgar, but the Whitecaps unveiling their new National Soccer Development Center, which you have to think will have a positive impact not only on the first team players at the MLS level, but the USL players and the residency players as well. Fantastic facility. G got a tour around it when, when they opened it. And th when you walk into the facility, the first team is down one end. And then the USL players and the residency players, when you go up the corridor, they turn to the left. And it's kind of, your goal is to see, I want to go down that corridor one day. I want to be at the end of that corridor. And for a lot of these guys that have been with the club from as young as 11 year old and the prospects, They've had their, their pathway, and now they can actually see a physical pathway from where they are into the first team. Or the case of David Norman Jr. from the age of nine, even. Yeah, th there's been a, a couple of guys. I mean, a lot of these guys have been together now for so many years. Norman, Chong, Baldissimo, Tommy Gardner. They know each other inside out. Rich Fagan knows them inside and out because he's been their coach. As they've moved up, he seems to have moved up with them. Bartman with a throw in as the Whitecaps look to get forward into the attacking third. Toma out wide on the left. Gets the ball and holds it in at the byline. Wins a corner kick. Good work there as the ball was played into him by Declan Wynn and David Norman Jr. across again. Second corner kick of the match for Whitecaps FC2. Two goals for the Whitecaps last weekend from David Norman corner, so we're hoping for the same again. He very nearly scored earlier this afternoon as well. You kind of don't see this kind of aerial threat that there perhaps was last week. Both goals coming from headers. Bartman did get one of them. Maybe look for Bevan here to get on the end of this. Outswinging ball with the left foot. 
Falls to Seymour in the box. He can't strike it. Surrounded by green shirts. Now here's DeVitt with his right foot and a great stop. Fingertips by Brian Meredith. And another corner kick as the Whitecaps ramp up the momentum. Fierce strike there from DeVitt. And he's, for a centre back, he has got a very cultured foot. I've seen him at training strike some fantastic free kicks. And he, for a big guy, he's really good with his feet. He's one of the best ball playing centre backs in the Whitecaps right now. Here's Norman again, high corner kick, headed down by Seymour, blocked away, DeVitt can't get to the loose ball, and Norman has it again, will he play a cross in? No, he'll send it forward for DeVitt. He'll send it into the area, headed down, and then a great save again by Meredith, this time Baldissimo. I think Meredith got his hand on that one, or are they gonna call it a goal kick here? Maybe Baldissimo just struck it over the bars. It fell right to his foot off the head of Bevan, it looked like, and I don't know, I thought yeah. Meredith touched that. To me, he had touched it. I was away to say it was a fantastic save, and just too fast to really see it there. Unless his hand went up towards it and it hit off the bar, which is what I think the referee has given, but fr from up here, it definitely looked like a fantastic save. Well, they are going to say goal kick, though, so. Unless there was a foul in the box before. Possibly, but if, if there wasn't, Meredith will be like, I, I want that save. <laughs> Errant goal kick will allow the Whitecaps to get forward again. And they have their tails up at the moment, but it's a run out of play again. We'll have a look at it. Good cross in by DeVitt and whew, might have struck the bar. Yeah, that's a good angle there. I think he was just waving his hand towards it, but it just didn't quite hit his hand. It hit the bar and over. But the the closer to Whitecaps have come yet to breaking the deadlock on their side and, and getting back on level terms. So that should give them some hope. They know that they can get in, they can get some shots. Bevan had the, the good chance as well. So a better second half so far from WFC2. And as you said, at first blush from our angle, looked to be a tremendous save by Brian Meredith, who has definitely been put to work in the first 15 or so minutes of the second half, much more than he was in the first. Yeah, and the, the Whitecaps definitely need to do this. You wonder when they might decide to change some things up a bit. They only have Thomas Sanner warming up just now, the rest of the guys just sitting on the bench. So I think Sanner might be somebody that they look to bring in. And you wonder whether it's at the expense of Bevan or whether they change the setup to go with two at the front. Well, Bevan can also play out wide if called upon as well. So it could be a case of maybe taking Bartman off, who's just not getting involved in this game, just they're not getting the ball to him, basically. DeVitt will play out from the back. Ball forward up that left side. Toma tried to bring it down. First touch let him down as well, though. Sorry. To Nanasinkum on that right side. Now it's played forward for Irvin Para. Para tried to cut in field. Played it back. And unable to control that was Charles Rinkin. And the Whitecaps in possession again. Long ball forward. Towards Bevan, way out on that left touch line and wins a throw in. And Bevan got a little bit of a limp there, so I'm not sure if he's taken a knock from that challenger before, but that's something to keep an eye on. He does still cover a lot of ground all the way over on the left side. He's a very, very fast forward. He had a couple of impressive outings over in Korea for the Under-20 World Cup for New Zealand. And he protects the ball well at the edge of the area. <laughs> Cross played in by Toma out and it took a deflection so this will be another corner kick for David Norman Jr. to try and create something from. Vancouver definitely turning the heat up here looking to try and get back on level terms much better showing in this half but they, they have to make these chances pay and try and get on the end of one of these excellent corner kicks from David Norman. Again it'll be a left footed out swinging ball and fell to ground in the area. No one on the Whitecaps could get a touch on it. And it's cleared away by the Sounders. Vancouver still pushing forward here. If the Caps are going to get all these corners, you have to feel Sanner is going to come on sooner rather than later just to have a big presence in the box. Here's Gardner with some space. Lovely bit of skill at the edge of the area there, unfortunately. 
I don't know if he was expecting Baldissimo or Bevin to run into that area. No one was there, and it is claimed by Brian Meredith, the keeper. Lovely little backflip there. Very Montero-esque from last week <laughs> to Jordan Harvey. But now a chance for Seattle to get forward. And it comes to Mathers in the area, and he makes no mistake. A right-footed driving strike just before the hour mark, and Sounders to strike against the run of play to go ahead two goals to nil. And that's something that Seattle can do so good. They can just turn the pace up, and fantastic through ball to Mathers, fantastic finish as well, leading the team now on six goals. We said he'd had a, a fairly quiet first half. He had the one shot which Spencer Ritchie saved, but a great finish there. Nothing Ritchie could really do about that when you get a player like Mathers who does have an eye for goal. And as you said, he's sixth of the year. The this former second round MLS Super Draft selection. The speed of that break though from Seattle was very impressive. They moved the ball really from ba back to front very quickly. Some lovely passing and a, a crisp finish. Whitecaps looking to get forward. Bartman bothering Riley Grant. And Grant earns the free kick. Bartman is one of those players on a yellow card. So it, as you talked about, it does look like Thomas Sanders is going to come in now. And if indeed he does enter the match, it could very well be Bartman that makes way. Long way back now for Vancouver. They kind of need to get as on level terms as soon as possible. But what, what Sanders is going to offer here is a little bit of height for these balls into the box, which they're, they're lacking just now. And if you do continue to win those corner kicks, as the Whitecaps have, and allow David Norman to whip those balls in. Sanner, with his size, makes sense to have him in the area. And he plays well at Langley. We, we've seen him get a few late goals here last season as well. He's a, a guy, I, I like his finishing prowess. I, I think he needs to work a little bit more on his football IQ. Sometimes his positioning lets him down. But the one thing he definitely is is a finisher, and that's what the Whitecaps are needing right now. He has had some very good games for this side. At the same time, he can get lost in a match, I find, where yeah. if he doesn't get the service, he struggles to maybe create himself if he's not getting that service at the front. Yeah, and sometimes his positioning does let him down. It, it's hard for a lot of players making the switch from, from college level to this level. And it's Matthew Baldissimo that is coming off here. So that has to indicate a... A change in shape, you would think, unless you move Andy Toma back. We may be looking at a straight 4-4-2 now. We'll see how they can uh, shape up. As Caden Chung is pressured into playing it out on the near touch line, and they do have Bevan and Sanner both leading the line at the minute. And when they came on last week, they, they seemed to strike up quite a good understanding. Also got Gloria Amanda on the bench, who's had a couple of goals now, and is another guy that can finish the chances. Whitecaps just need to create them, really. 18-year-old Edmontonian Gloria Amanda. Disappointing week for him down at the USSDA playoffs, uh, as with a couple of the guys that went down, five of the USL team went down to that. Won their first match, drew their second nil-nil, but unfortunately a late goal knocked him out of the playoffs when it, you felt that was a match that was there for the taking. So Gloria will be keen to get back into the lineup here and make amends for that. We'll see if he's allowed to do that this afternoon, of course, with DeVries coming off at halftime. Two of the substitutions already used by Rich Fagan. With Sanner coming on for Baldissimo. Now a ball forward into the area and a good left-footed strike over the bar from Declan Wynn. But so it will be a corner kick. Another corner for the Whitecaps here, and the first chance for Sanner to possibly use his height in the box. And it was a good hit from Wynn. That did force Meredith to touch it over the bar, and as a result, 
Norman. We'll play it in. You can see there Seymour, Sanner, and DeVitt, as well as Toma, trying to cause a little bit of a nuisance for the Seattle back line. Not enough on that corner kick from David Norman Jr. And the Sounders will look to get forward, although it's played out again. It's part of the, the problem for the Whitecaps this afternoon, just the delivery just is not getting past the, the first Seattle man and giving the, the forwards much of a chance. Now here's a ball towards center, headed away by L, but falls to Bevin. Looking to knock it out wide for win, but that's called a handball. As it looked like it might have struck him in the forearm as it bounced off, off the turf. And it'll be a free kick for Sounders too. Now in the 65th minute, if you are just joining us, Seattle goals from Ray Sari in the 31st minute, rather, off a deflection, an unfortunate deflection off Sim DeVitt. Dave Sounders to a first half lead. They added to that just before the hour mark. A confident right footed strike from Zach Mathers in the area. And you, you do have the feeling there's more goals in this Seattle Sounders team. They've looked very dangerous. They've just needed a half chance, really, to to cause some danger to Spencer Ritchie. Mathers very nearly scored early on in the match, back in the 22nd minute. Was in alone on Ritchie, who made a very confident save. Here's Declan Wynn up the left side, plays it into the area. That was destined for Bevan, and a great, vital challenge by Brian Nanasinkum to prevent Bevan from very well testing the keeper and you would back his chances to score from that sort of an area. Yeah, I was very well read there by the Seattle defender. I thought it was going to be a ball to the back post, but he tried to cut it back to Bevan. It just maybe didn't have enough on it, which uh, allowed him to, to get the foot in there. We'll have another look at it here. And to say that Nana Sinkum came to the rescue there, I think, is apt because Bevan was right there. Meredith was coming out as well, so he was off his goal line if Bevan had had the, the ball there. As we do see a change here for Seattle Sounders too. That's Zach Mathers going off and David Olson coming on. Olson, a 21-year-old Seattle native. Olsen was one of eight players called up from the Sounders 2 squad for the USL for the US Open Cup match midweek. Didn't get on, but it does show that the Sounders are keen to have a look at these guys in competitive action. Sam Rogers, Francesco Narbonne, Ray Sari, and Irvin Para were in the starting 11 for that 2-1 loss to San Jose Earthquakes at the Avaya Stadium in San Jose. And Sari out as well. Francisco Narbonne. Francisco Narbonne, who I just mentioned there, the Panamanian, formerly of FC Cincinnati, now into the match too. And the Whitecaps will be glad to see Mathers off. It takes a, a big attacking threat out of the Sounders 2 team. Seattle probably just happy now just to see out the, the remaining half of this half. So Vancouver need to try and get something going pretty quickly to get back in this. And that is both goal scorers leaving the match. Sorry, had his second of the season. Team leading sixths of the year for Mathers. Whitecaps have only been blanked in two of the games this year, so you feel that there is a goal here. They're on a three-game winless streak at the moment. They don't want to make it four. A number of their defeats this year has just been by a solitary goal. There's not really been any hammerings dished out to them. They've been on the wrong end of a few narrow results and they don't want this to be another one. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. 69th minute here at McLeod Athletic Park in Langley as Bartman crosses into the area. Sanner couldn't get to it. Bartman regains possession on the near touchline. Infield for David Norman Jr. Quickly played to Thomas Gardner and then back for Will Seymour. Caden Chung looking to get forward up the right side as DeVitt has the ball. Tried to force a pass ahead to Bartman that was knocked away, but Gardner keeps possession. Chung. 
Looking to take on the left back Grant, crosses it in, headed away though to Irvin Para. And we featured him as our player to watch for Seattle before this afternoon's contest got underway and he hasn't really made a big impact on the match but hasn't had to with some of his teammates in Mathers and Sari stepping up to score the goals. He definitely seems a good prospect. He's, he's dotted about the fourth division in Germany before coming over to the Sounders. So he's got a good pedigree. No goals for him in the last two games. This would be three, but he was the player of the week in the USL in week 11 after a brace and an assist on June 3rd. So we know he can do it. Here's a chance for Toma to get forward. Another good defensive play by Brian Nanasinkum, the right back. Prevented the Whitecaps from getting forward, and now David Norman gets stuck in there and is called for a foul. Another substitution here for Whitecaps FC2. It's going to be Glory Amanda for Andy Toma. Toma had a good first half, but just really hasn't been in it this half at all. So good to see Amanda on, but that's three strikers on now, so it's going to be interesting to see what formation WFC2 head into here. Amanda taking more of a midfield role, possibly might head out in the wing. He does have pace, so that's a good spot for him, and it almost looks like he's ended up in the spot that Nazim Bartman was playing prior, and they've moved Bartman across to the left side. And why not bring on another striking threat? Under 20 minutes left in normal time and trailing by two goals. Still trying to work out what formation they're going with. It kind of looks like a 4-4-2 or a maybe a 4-1-3-2. Tommy Gardner is playing a little bit deeper. There's the Whitecaps with a quickly taken free kick. Win for Norman. Now Bartman looking to cut in from that left side. Ball towards Bevan, and he wins it in the area. Meyer Bevan. Forced out towards the touchline, keeps possession, passes back for Declan Wynn. Now David Norman Jr. Towards Thomas Center, he'll head it out wide for Glory Amanda. Amanda for Caden Chung, back for Amanda. He's got space, he could have a hit here. He'll play it into the box instead, headed away calmly by Sam Rogers. Whitecaps look like they're working things forward here, trying to attack. It's that final delivery, though, into the box that it's continuing to let them down. Tommy Gardner last week was fantastic and really got involved, but they've struggled to get him involved in this one. As he's called for a foul there inside the center circle. Make sure you tune in to USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. It's Mondays, 6 o'clock Pacific time. And it brings you the latest news and information from around the league. Also, don't forget, Sirius XMFC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check uslsoccer.com for dates and times. Uh, A little bit quiet yeah. here at McLeod Athletic Park. If you're the Whitecaps, you want to give the 923 fans here in attendance something to cheer about. And if you can snatch a goal here in the next few minutes, then we could have quite a interesting finish. Definitely a good Canadian Day crowd. <laughs> a lot of red and white, as I said, on this July the 1st. Glory Amanda. Ball into the box just over the head of Sander. Falls to David Norman. Can he have a hit? Onto his right foot. Forward towards Bevan. Bit of a tight angle. He'll try to roll it back in. Hit it away. Amanda looking to meet it in midfield. Instead, it's Seymour who gets into quite a tussle with Para. I think Norman maybe should have had the shot there. He tried to find Bevan in the box, but he'd made room for himself, and the shot was on, and you kind of feel that was maybe the better option for him. Now here's a win with a good run forward. Looked like he might have been fouled by Narbonne, but referee waves play on. DeVitt at the halfway line. Diagonal ball towards Bartman in the area. Rising to head that away was Nana Sinkum. Rankin 
Plays it out, and Whitecaps with a quickly taken throw in. Here's David Norman Jr. with a little bit of space to work with. Rolls it out wide for Declan Wynn. Left-footed cross. Amanda heads it down over the head of Bevan and then knocked away by Nana Sinkum. And back to DeVitt at the halfway line, but the Whitecaps with lots of men forward here, creating chances again. As you say, it's that final delivery that's let them down as of yet. Here's Amanda, edge of the area. Lost the ball. And could the counterattack be on for Seattle Sounders too? And this is where they've been so dangerous today, just with these quick breaks at the pitch. Bit of an errant pass from Sam Rogers there. And the Whitecaps back in possession. Crowd very animated. I'm not really <laughs> sure of what that was about. As Gardner goes down under a challenge from Olsen. And with about a quarter of an hour remaining. A goal and a goal very quickly. This is what the doctor has ordered for the Whitecaps. Can they deliver though? That ball never reached Amanda. And there's a foul as well. The Seattle back line's dealt with everything pretty much that's come in high into the box all afternoon. You kind of feel that Vancouver's best chance now is to try and play the ball more on the deck because they, they've had most of their successes when the ball's not been in the air. Although at the same time, now that you have Sander on, you want to try and yeah, it's just let him get sure his head on it. Make sure the ball gets to him, though. It's like it's just not enough on these crosses into the box to find the white caps that are in the box. The service definitely hasn't been where I'm sure Rich Fagan would have liked it to be thus far this afternoon. Another substitution coming up for Seattle shortly. No Whitecap subs warming up, so you kind of feel Rich Fagan feels this is the team that is going to be trying to have something going with this. As we have seen three changes for Whitecaps FC2 now with... Sanner and Amanda coming on, as did Seymour at halftime. It is going to be Shandon Hopiow coming off. I do kind of feel, though, that the, the team that's on the pitch just now is what Rich Fagan feels is maybe going to be the team that, that gets them back into this. Looking at what is left on the Whitecaps bench, I don't think we might see any more changes, at least until the Whitecaps maybe get a goal to get back in. And it is going to be an uh, academy really striker, job. Azrael Gonzalez, coming on for Sounders FC2. White gaps with a quickly taken free kick, Glory Amanda. Now David Norman. Finds Nazim Bartman. Way out on that left flank. And Bartman looking to cut forward. Nice ball out wide. Declan Wynn with some space to get it into the area. To the back post. Sander heads it on. But it doesn't test Brian Meredith. Right there to clasp it. Needed to, either, save. needed to either get more on that or towards the back post for someone else to come in. Just not a very powerful header. But at least it's a chance that they've won something in the air. Which we haven't seen a lot of in this match. Bit of a difficult angle for Sander to get much more on that header, I think. But you definitely want to try and test the keeper more than what happened in that instance. Been a fairly easy afternoon for Meredith. A few good chances for the Caps at the start of this half, but nothing too, too testing for the big man. Amanda, looked like he might have fouled Gonzalez there. Referee allows play to continue. 79th minute, 2-0 to the visitors. Seattle Sounders 2. Gloria Amanda lost his footing in midfield, lost the ball as well, and David Olsen's back onto it. For Gonzalez, up the left side. Closed down quickly by Caden Chung. Gonzalez, back into midfield for Narbonne. Ramos to Olsen, back to L. As the Sounders knock the ball around here, content to keep possession and tick those valuable seconds off the clock. Narbonne 
Arbonne out wide on the left side for Riley Grant. Will he be able to play a cross in instead? Elects to go back to Narbonne. Grant. Olsen plays it off of Chung and out for a throw in again. Chung's getting a little bit isolated out here on the right wing. There, He's had two men for the last couple of minutes in these attacks. So th Gloria Amanda needs to kind of play a better defensive game than he's doing right now because he's leaving Chung very exposed. David Norman with a long ball towards Meyer Bevan. Don't think he saw it hit the back of his head. Now he'll cut towards the area. Had Sander to his right, elected to keep the ball, loses possession. It was a good run made by Sander as well. You have to think if Bevan had a second crack at that, he would have given it to him. Yeah, disappointing decision making there from the Kiwi. Sander was free to get the ball. Headed away by Chung in the area. Balls to Narbonne in midfield. Thought about having a hit, but instead plays it to Gonzalez, who maybe with a bit of a hopeful attempt at goal, yeah. sends it well wide. You can hope that in games to come, once Bevan and Sanner have had a more of a chance to play together, more time together with training, that there's going to be a bit of a better understanding there. But they need to be more aware of where each other is. That, that was quite poor from Bevan, decision-making-wise. As you have to. I think Sander would have been clean in at goal yeah. and you would have backed him to score in that sort of a situation as well. And there's been a couple of instances like that this afternoon where this young Whitecaps side will be able to learn from some of the decisions made or decisions not made. It's tough because these guys, they all want to score. Bevan particularly, we talked about his desire to get that first goal for the club. And sometimes that overshadows what should be the best decision. Sander in the box. Battling for the ball. Bevan in there as well. Meredith able to clear the danger, but Caden Chung is going to dart forward and send a high cross in towards the back post, but a little bit too much on that one, and it goes out of play. Yeah, Vancouver starting to cause a few problems in the Seattle box. Bevan and Sanna are definitely being a, a menace, and they're having their best success with the ball on the deck. Question is, is it too little too late? You have to think, eight minutes to go, and there's not going to be a ton of stoppage time. So uh, more that these minutes tick down, the harder it's going to be for the Caps to get back into this. That said, this is a Whitecaps side, Whitecaps 2 side, rather, that we have seen over the past couple of seasons have some late twists and turns in some of their matches. So you never know. Yeah, and Sanner is known for a, a late goal here and there. White Caps will need two to change the result. As Bevan is in possession again in midfield. Keeping the ball. Nice pass ahead for Gloria Amanda. Amanda to the edge of the area. Out wide for Nassim Bartman. Plays the cross in with his left foot. Nowhere near where I think he would have intended that to go. And a goal kick. Just another poor delivery from the White Caps. It's been their story of their afternoon. Something that Rich Fagan will clearly want to work on in the coming week. Seattle just happy to kill the pace of this game now. To see out these final seven minutes. Whitecaps FC2 on the road a week from today. They'll face Colorado Sp Springs Switchbacks FC, rather. Saturday, July 8th. Back home again Wednesday, July 12th. To welcome Swope Park Rangers to T-Bird Stadium. That's a bit of a different one. July 12th, a Wednesday. It's going to be a noon kickoff at T-Bird. Yeah, we're used to nooners at the Nat in the summer <laughs> in Vancouver. Now we've got a nooner at the Bird. And being right in the midst of July, you would expect the weather to be hot and sunny like today, although in Vancouver you just never know, do no, you? No, Thunderbird Stadium's a strange stadium because it can be really warm outside and on the pitch, but under the stand it can be really cold there once the shade gets in. Whitecaps have two noon games uh, this summer. They've got another one coming up in August as well. So it's interesting to see them trying different things, trying to get different dynamics into the game, different demographics, hopefully have a, a good turnout from families for that one. 
noon kickoff August 2nd as well, as you mentioned, against Rio Grande Valley FC. Chance for Marco Carducci to come back against his old team and maybe cause a few problems to them. Speaking of problems, the officials having to settle down some tempers on the far touchline. Will Seymour having quite an animated chat with match referee Juan Marquez there. Yeah, Seymour's another one of these guys that doesn't hold anything back from tackles and himself and Bartman involved there. Bartman has to watch being on a yellow card from the first half as well. Eighty fifth minute, two nil. Sounders FC two. Whitecaps in search of a goal or two, but you need one in order to score two. Of course. Hard to see where it's coming from right now. The pace has just dropped drastically here. Which will suit Seattle. Thomas Gardner in midfield. For David Norman Jr. Wide to Caden Chung, who has been quiet this afternoon. He has been known to be a part of the attack as he looks to get forward there. Couldn't receive the pass from Gloria Amanda and the Sounders. Attempt to play it up the touchline. Not out, though as David Norman finds Chung ahead of him. Good rung by Chung. He's got some space midfield and on a tremendous challenge there Fantastic. from Olsen. Fantastic tackle from Olsen. That was really good to see. Well-timed. Not Sam so well-timed. Goes in on one of the Seattle players, draws applause from some of the fans in attendance here. <laughs> as I think that's Para who's taking his time regaining his footing here. I think they're just wanting to see some action on the pitch of any kind right now. And Whitecaps dominated this half with possession and just not done anything with it. And as we saw with the first team last week, 23% possession for Whitecaps and Minnesota get two goals. So it doesn't really matter how much possession you have. It's what you do with it. And the Whitecaps too has done nothing with it today. Just a shove in the back there from DeVitt on Para. As frustration, I'm sure, starts to creep in for many of these, many of these players, rather, late on. Ball through to center. Bit of a heavy first touch. And the Whitecaps are forced back deep into their own half yet again. Yeah, Seattle just happy to clear the ball anywhere just now, just see these last few minutes out. Chung getting more forward now uh, after what we were just saying there. Almost on cue after I mentioned that he hadn't been very involved. But now out of position. And all sorts of space here on the near side. Gonzalez onto the ball. Amanda back to mark him as Para gets possession. Para towards the corner flag trying to run out some of the time on the clock. Thomas Gardner all over him. Para doing a tremendous job holding off two white caps and draws a foul. It's one of those frustrating things in games. When, when it's your team that's in the corner flag, it's always good to see the time killed off. But when it's the opposition, it's one of the things I hate seeing in games. <laughs> and Seattle's likely to take a short one here and just keep it in there. Oh, no. They're not going to keep it in there, but it is shortly taken to Para. Good effort there by Chung. Couldn't hold it in play. And Sounders, too, are going to take their time here with the throw-in. As we move into the 89th minute. Amanda wins the ball back and plays it forward for Santa. Whitecaps darting forward. Sanner with Amanda in front of him. Cuts it back to David Norman. Now Thomas Gardner to Will Seymour. Lots of men forward for the Whitecaps as Norman is knocked off the ball in midfield by Narbonne. Wins a free kick. Need to get something going now. I mean, there's still, still time for a very dramatic comeback, but... Basically, you feel they have to get something from this. Ball forward towards the area by Narbonne, or rather by Norman. Dealt with 
calmly by Sounders too. As the ball falls again to Brian Meredith, who's well on his way to another clean sheet. Less than a minute of normal time remaining. Did have some work to do early in the second half, but otherwise pretty quiet all in all for the 27-year-old keeper for Sounders too. In his fourth game of the USL season, only allowed eight goals. This would be his second clean sheet. Win. Looking for a long ball forward towards Sander. He does find Sander who couldn't do much with the header. And again, it's Olsen. Out wide onto the right side for Rankin. Charles Rankin passed it back to the halfway line. The Sounders just holding on to the ball here, killing off the clock. As we see three added minutes from the fourth official. The fourth official on the sideline. And near impossible for the Whitecaps to snap two goals back at this point. Yeah, I have to think so. I mean, the best I can maybe hope for is to, to stop being blank for the third time this year, but... Even that's looking a bit of a forlorn hope right now. Mentioned the noon game July the 12th, which is a Wednesday out at Thunderbird Stadium. Whitecaps will play two home games in that week. Home July 15th, which is a Saturday to Reno, a 3 p.m. kickoff. That one also at T-Bird. So a couple of great opportunities to catch USL soccer in the lower mainland in the month of July. For tickets, go to whitecapsfc2.com. And a big challenge there from DeVitt. He might go into the book here. And the next game here at McLeod Athletic Park, LA Galaxy come to town on Sunday, August 27th. 3 p.m. kickoff, so make sure you get out for that one. Whitecaps 2 will be looking to avenge their season opening 2-0 defeat against LA. As DeVitt was shown a yellow card for that challenge. Not sure exactly from our vantage point which Sounders player it is who's down. Might be Rodrigo L. He hasn't moved very much. Just moving his feet a little bit now, but that seemed a really hard collision. And now he's fine. <laughs> I think that was actually, it was L, indeed. Back to his feet now. You just worry when players go down and don't move. You're so used to players rolling about that you know, ah, they're okay. <laughs> but it's when they actually just lie there and don't move at all, you start to get a little bit worried for them. L appears to be all right. Will be a free kick for Sounders too, and mere seconds remaining in the match this afternoon, you have to think at this point. Ball sent forward and cut out nicely by Seymour, edge of the area. Rankin up the right side, rolls it out of play for a goal kick. DeVitt, the fourth white cap to go into the book this afternoon. It's not really been that dirty a game either for a, a Cascadian derby, but some couple of wild tackles punished in the first half. As Sanner wins that header towards Bevan, tried to flick it on for Amanda, but execution not quite there. As Wynn passes forward for Nazim Bartman. Bartman protecting the ball in midfield for Thomas Gardner. Gardner for Gloria Amanda. Amanda, nice cross in towards Sanner, headed away. Now it falls for Bevan, who is able to keep possession. Wanted to have a hit, I think. Now pass back for Caden Chung just as he'd run forward, didn't reach him. And try as they might, the Whitecaps can't create the chance that they hope would get them on the board as we get the final whistle to bring a close to this afternoon's proceedings. A confident road victory for Seattle Sounders FC2 by a score of two, two goals to nil, rather, over Whitecaps FC2. Well-deserved win for Seattle this afternoon. They had their chances, they took it. Difference was in the delivery, basically, and the clinical finishing by Seattle. 
Third time now this year that White Caps have been held off the score sheet. Rich Fagan's going to be disappointed with that performance. Just not a lot there. Missing a lot of their MLS guys that have played a lot of minutes this year. Ben McKendry and Marco Bustos travelling with the first team to Chicago, although not involved there today. And both of them were a big loss this afternoon, I feel. We'll be back with the final match stats and highlights in a moment after a 2-0 win for Seattle Sounders FC2. And once you go upstairs, the second level is basically split in two halves. One is the first team half, and then the other is WFC2 and Academy. So it creates a separation and aspirational motivation to move towards the first team side. First class, man. First class. They thought of everything. And, and they put me next to a bunch of these Americans in here. So I might need to change that up. Yo, hablo espanol. So. Oh, next to the goalkeeper. That definitely needs to change. Come on. Oh, yeah. Everything is controlled by this locker right here. So every morning you have to come and tell me what music we want. So far, it's really nice. Uh, the locker room is great. The locker room is really good. Definitely surprised me. Definitely surprised. I'm really happy. With it. It's a uh, European style with uh, a lot of technology, and uh, obviously for for us, uh, how the club is taking care of the players, uh, giving us the the tools to step every day in training. Uh, with everything we need, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, very nice. I've never seen anything like it. No? You see, European style. Like open, you can see face to face. Two nil the final for Seattle Sounders FC2 over Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 this afternoon at McLeod Athletic Park in Langley as we get a look at the final stats for this afternoon's match. We talked at halftime, Michael, about how the Whitecaps hadn't really created enough shots on target. They get a couple here in the second half, but not enough to break through, and it's a clean sheet for Brian Meredith. Yeah, I mean, four shots in that second half to actually lead the match 4-3, but, I mean, only three shots on target for Seattle, and they bury two of them. 60% of the possession for Sounders, too, as well. Tells the story this afternoon as we get into the highlights from the match here today, and it started back in the first half. Whitecaps created a couple of chances early. Meyer Bevan going for goal from the edge of the area. Missed wide. Spencer Ritchie had to... Make an early save on Zach Mathers, who was in alone, getting past the defense, did a good job. Whitecaps did concede, though, a bit of a difficult one to swallow as Sari's volley takes a tough deflection off Sim DeVitt. Richie helpless to hold it out. And the visitors had a 1-0 lead in the 31st minute. Whitecaps did create chances at the other end of the park. That was Meredith with a save early on in the second half off a... Uh, chance to vit forcing Meredith into another another save so the Whitecaps did have opportunities Matthew Baldissimo in front looked like a save to us at first it did strike the bar and then the Sounders after that chance by Baldissimo that you see there goes off the crossbar Sounders put the match to bed Mathers getting in behind a confident right footed strike no chance for Spencer Ritchie there Mathers with his team leading 
sixth goal of the season. Completes the scoring this afternoon. Seattle Sounders FC2 defeat Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 by two goals to nil. For Michael McCall, I'm Brendan Batchelor. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy Canada Day from Langley. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent from the United Soccer League.